And there are now more than a billion YouTubers. These are all numbers from uh, Wikipedia and Google and so on. I look at their numbers occasionally. This wind may screw me over today. Um, YouTube is less than 10 years old. It was founded in uh, 2005 uh, by a couple of uh, PayPal employees, and I'm not even <clears throat> I'm not even going to get started on PayPal at this moment. <laughs> um, an average of 3.5 plus million people a day have joined YouTube. Around 1.5 billion unique users. That's different users. This windscreen. Log in every day. 1.5 billion every day. The numbers are staggering. It's as if uh, hundreds of cities the size of Los Angeles and New York combined suddenly <clears throat> cropped up around the globe and uh, to the best of my I've made quite a study of YouTube in the last since it came online it was something I had envisioned in the 90s and the technology really wasn't there um, I came up with something called the Sliver Network, uh, and then uh, the same idea basically, and I, I, uh, a film executive, I told her I was dating her, I told her about it, she, she presented the idea to some people, the Sliver Network is what I called it, and uh, I guess they made a movie, <laughs> and so on kind of shows you what happens when an idea gets out there sometimes, but that's like trying to patent a shoelace or something, you know, some ideas. Um, but uh, the, the numbers are vast and staggering with YouTube. Um, I'm convinced that no one yet, it's less than 10 years old, so no one yet really realizes what it is, uh, and that at, at some point, it will be used as a, uh, a historical and a serious, you know, it's a serious thing to me. It's a serious tool uh, as a uh, a physicist, a computer scientist by education, and at times trade, like Steven Seagal in that movie. I also cook. Uh, that's how I got into computers was uh, and recorded music with them. I was a musician and uh, it all all recording in the like late 80s turned to computers and I was one of the first people that had a computer based digital studio in Los Angeles and uh, it just exploded in a business and industry where they did not want me nobody could say no you know um, and I've had all kinds of positions with all kinds of companies uh, and I went to school for uh, uh, physics and computers and uh, um, recording arts and so on and psychology to a degree um, but uh, you know there's just so much stuff there it's such I see no one really knows what it is and, and imagine if we could look back and they'll figure this out soon enough this this video will be part of that archive making videos for YouTube no matter how good they are and getting people to watch them are two different affairs <laughs> um, but imagine if we could look back and see video from around the world from hundreds of thousands of different angles what was going on, on that day and look back at the time of the Romans or the cavemen or you know <laughs> prehistoric man, the history of man. It's a, you know, I get kind of pissy about it because they, the people who, they're not in control of it, first of all. There are, for every single employee at Google, there are 57,000 YouTube users now. 67,000 went up. The last time I looked, there were only 880 million. 
uh, YouTube users has gone up in the last six months uh, tremendously but uh, you know they don't it's not being used properly yet or harnessed properly in the future it will be um, and uh, as a historical and scientific tool uh, a, a sociological tool there are actually things something called uh, people that do forensic data on computers looking back at the history of data across networks and on single computers and figuring out what's happened on this machine for a lot of different reasons you know uh, but in the future that'll be more and more this way that's another thing I've learned unless your message is clear and concise I've learned that with my music a lot uh, or make a clear and concise vlog then it's you know not understandable and sort of pointless <laughs> I've made a few of those you know but uh, yeah I've learned so much from uh, you know I deal with people in bulk my my uh, my YouTube page is uh, my main one Billy Bob Kick Roller Cash Jr. this site isn't even being marketed at all my main site is uh, being marketed to between 20 and 50,000 people every day, about 1.5 million people per month are given the opportunity to uh, check it out, sent a link, you know, and uh, or other advertising. Um, I mean, the numbers are just staggering. You know, the great thing about YouTube, what I, uh, you know, first of all, it's a serious tool people don't realize that yet it's less than 10 years old I, I think in in the future that there will be laws passed about how this this these files all of these files all of our files this thing tells the story of of mankind and now from this point on on, on pictures you know in video with sound the best way to tell a story it's really telling the story of our our kind from here on out and, uh, you know, it's sort of not taken seriously at this moment in time, but it will be, and I think there'll be laws passed about archiving this data, and eventually, probably a true cloud, <laughs> cloud computing, there'll be a, uh, a network of computers orbiting the Earth where every bit of data is beamed up to them in case there's a calamity so that our story will be told. I know this stuff kind of sounds far out there, but it's not, you know, the data is what's important. I don't know if you follow Moore's Law or the Law of Technology, but it it becomes, every 18 months, exponentially more powerful and uh, exponentially cheaper <laughs> in the future, in the not-too-distant future. Uh, a computer will cost you pennies. Your computer will be worth a penny. It's just stamped silicon basically you know uh, it'll be pennies for your computer but the data will be invaluable um, but there's so much stuff here I've been setting up I, I now <clears throat> with the number of people that hit my page with marketing and without even marketing the number of people that hit my Facebook page and the number of people who request uh, to buy what I'm doing um, the music I'm doing I see no problem at all with even in two years uh, you know uh, making a really you know a, a nice living at this um, it's uh, there's a whole lot of stuff there and I have several different areas of expertise that I've harnessed to sort of put all this together uh, one of the most I've never even gone into is the marketing aspect and, and the engineering that I've put together to just achieve the marketing 24 hours a day for a year and you know if you put videos on YouTube uh, getting people to watch them is they would almost there's a lot of stuff there they would almost rather do anything than watch a video that you ask them to watch or want them to watch and you know why is that there are flies under this damn tree but no uh, one of the things behind that is the same thing that in the A&R business, that's people who discover new talent for record companies. I've done that and produced for many major labels and so on. I've actually 
turn down a few offers from a couple of major labels <coughs> which I'll go into at some point they were kind of sucker offers so far although it won't stay that way for long um, but what's behind that is people not wanting to watch your videos we all like to have a sense of control and we like to think we're clever about our choices the things that we choose you know there's a lot of arrogance and ego in the A&R business you know uh, I, I know people who have they had no talent in music so they wanted to choose the people that we all get to listen to you know and uh, so you know the thing behind that is when you ask somebody to watch their video a lot of times you get like a meh whatever you know response and uh, the, the psychology behind that is everybody wants to think that they discovered something on their own you know and uh, they're the person who was smart enough to say this was really good um, and uh, there's just a tremendous amount of psychology there but uh, in the A&R business, you know, everybody wants to be the person who discovered, the guy who discovered Prince. I saw a video with him, don't remember his name now. I also used to teach at UCLA and he has a course there too. I saw him the other night on, on a video. But he was talking about how people would come up to his face and tell him they discovered Prince, you know. I think it's Warren Hasney, maybe. Anyway. Uh, but that's that same mentality that holds with getting people to watch your videos, you know. Plus, there's, there's a lot of stuff there, but the point is getting people to watch. Any video on YouTube is, is nearly impossible, but because most of it is overwhelmingly uh, trash. <laughs> it's just not well thought out, you know. Most of the people are amateurs you know wanting to have fun and that's that's the great thing about YouTube is also the terrible thing about it in a way and that is anyone trying to put together a serious career on it uh, would uh, um, is hampered by millions of children with cell phones uploading you know shots of their tennis shoes there's some fantastic I love videos like that but the thing is is I think and the point is kind of that things will be right now they really don't control uh, how it's searched and how it's accessed very well and I think that these things will be refined in the future I do believe there's an absolute market for everything I mean and especially stuff that's good although on YouTube you cannot count on how you could reshoot Planet of the Apes with with a webcam and do a better job and in every way you know or alien with you know a handheld and do a better job nobody would watch it you know there's it's the same thing that holds true in the in the record industry I learned pretty quick when I was uh, developing and producing for major labels and you know the first time I had somebody uh, camping out in my front yard with a guitar the word had gotten out you know that I did that professionally in the big leagues and uh, you know you're uh, you you get exposed to the sea of humanity and uh, most are I would say dreamers and without basis although there's some incredible talent out there but so it's it's like that but uh, one of the things that uh, that I would say is, you know, in the music business, what I learned is there are thousands of U2s out there, there are bands, there are thousands of Led Zeppelins, people better than Led Zeppelin, more talent, better than U2, better than any band you could think of. The only reason we've heard of those uh, people is that they were marketed by, and that's all a record label has to offer these days, is to put the money in the marketing and if they're not going to market something or ever release it uh, then there's there's no point um, so um, you know for me one of the things that I've learned is that uh, and relearned is that um, 
it doesn't matter how good you are <clears throat> you should have an excellent 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 product definitely but that's not enough it has to be then taken to the people which is what I'm doing now you know and have been 24 hours a day for more than a year and uh, because you know I run into people all the time and I don't even get haters anymore you know and it, and the few times that I have you know I think nearly 5,000 thumbs up and 300 down <laughs> tells the story people are good I've learned that people are basically pretty pretty good you give them half a chance you know um, but um, you know every time that I run across a hater it's usually somebody who has unrealistic uh, when I trace them down unrealistic views about pretty mediocre material uh, you know they're musicians wanting to make it and that's a tough spot when to kind of feel like you're a cut above and your stuff because everybody I don't care who you are nobody puts a video on YouTube and doesn't dream that somehow that will go viral you know there's no way in hell that a vlog like this will go viral in fact most people aren't gonna listen they're just gonna we're such fickle beings that most people will just flip on the see that it's not what they they're uh, gonna gratify them immediately <laughs> And uh, they'll just go away, you know. I always say, if you want to keep a secret, make a video about it, put it on YouTube. Nobody will watch it. Um, and uh, you know, but the, the I like to think anyway, maybe true, maybe I don't think it's. I think it is true, but it might not be. I like to think the people that stick around and watch them get a little extra value out of mine. You know, these music and computers, technology has been my life, and I'm, you know. Uh, well versed in, in a lot of different things and that's uh, my strong suit so um, there's a lot of stuff there you know the thing that's really missing too on YouTube I see it every day is the human drama that plays out and the, the sort of uh, um, the links of one thing leads me to another leads me to another one astounding thing after another um, and the people but uh, I think as it gets straightened out and how it's searched and how it's viewed and so on that it, it's kind of that people will get you know everybody will get some views and right now it's about generating money too. the YouTube company first of all they don't know what they're doing they don't even know what it is yet you know within 20 years it'll be an archival scientific part of it will be archived for science and history and and teaching and learning and all of this stuff and, and you know studying the history of mankind in this era but uh, they don't even know what it is yet they're sort of playing around with different ideas and it is sort of like watching children play with uh, an atom bomb they just don't know how to harness it you know they're trying but they're doing all this kind of cutesy stupid stuff that's in my opinion just a waste it could be so much more but uh, there's just so much there you, you know it is I try to watch as many videos as I can but uh, I find so I found a vlog of a woman in South America in Spanish I happen to speak Spanish pretty well and she had been keeping a vlog daily faithfully for several years and posting it and no one was and she was particularly unattractive too you know <laughs> it just didn't work out for her at all so I mean she just wasn't pleasant to look at wasn't pleasant to listen to and pleasant to listen to and was not and uh, but she had been keeping that I felt so sad for her because it was like well some people would dig this you know but as one of the marketing engineers that I was following said and, and wrote and, and I looked at uh, some of the things that they were saying is that just being good and putting something on YouTube even no matter how good it is even major Hollywood movies put stuff on YouTube a nobody cares and B nobody will find it you know, if they even care um, so there's a lot of stuff there I mean I presented my stuff in the last uh, year to approximately like I think it's 12.7 million people out of that around uh, around one percent have come back uh, you know a hundred and 
ten thousand and I got rid of some videos so it was more like a hundred twenty thousand but the one percent one percent that's what you can expect uh, you know in I've learned so much is on that one percent though you know but it, it it's really in life you could <laughs> I've learned to you have to sort of how can I say this a lot of people said have said a lot of stuff to me and I get so many I get around 500 emails a day having to do with my site comments so and so subscribe I'm an average of 22 people a day subscribe to me uh, my professional site but uh, dealing with people in that number I really learned again and relearned that if you go through your whole life one percent of the people that you meet less than one percent one percent of the people you know now let's say that should have any say or any bearing on your life and I mean you want to take into what I call loving account about what people say and sort of entertain what they're saying in a loving kind of objective way and go huh is that right but um, is what he's saying is that valid or not but in another way you kind of have to go no his area of expertise is totally different A. B. he doesn't even know what I'm trying to say or where I'm coming from with this statement or this piece of music you know a lot of times I find music I'll do in the style of some groovy band like Massive Attack or Portishead and people of a certain age just don't get it they're like well that sounds weird you know so I understand I I can predict they're gonna say that you know when I put it up but you also have to be accessible to everyone so a lot of times I'm trying to pass on sort of a neat style to somebody who's never kind of heard that style before there's a lot of stuff here but yeah the main thing I've learned is that really is that people your friends and uh, if you have any you know and even the ones who are sort of <sighs> claiming to be your friends when pressed will probably drop away you know um, and from your life if you ask them to actually do something especially the older you get and that's not like oh poor me that's just the facts that's the, everybody's busy um, but I'm in the in the process of monetizing my site, uh, creating uh, a limited liability company, which I've already done all the paperwork in Nevada for tax purposes, and then creating a DB, DBA, doing business as under that for tax purposes. Also, when I was in in the studio business and manufacturing business and computer consulting business about once every few years somebody comes along and pretends that they slip and fall on something in your residence or whatever somebody just trying to make some quick bucks you know if you have a limited liability company that sort of says well no you can't really take very much at all it's a waste of your time you can only take what the company has and not even much of that not what I have there's a lot there but um been setting up yeah PayPal Jesus two PayPal employees I went round and round with PayPal <laughs> I'll end this vlog in 2004 and 5 it went on they had a lot of money of mine and uh, I bought a or sold a film scanner to a guy in Vietnam well somehow they flagged my account I mean it was a legitimate eBay deal you know they flagged my account anyway we went over thirty thousand dollars and I went back and forth with them for the best part of a year and, and I'm gonna bitch about some so it may be a little different now although uh, um, at that time um, it was uh, um, I thought, well, surely this is a bank. It's an online bank. Well, no, it's not a bank, it's not a credit card company. The same with these hundreds of cities that have sprung up the size of New York and L.A. because of YouTube. These virtual communities don't really ha exist anywhere and don't have to adhere to rules of anywhere. So PayPal may still not be a bank, may still not be a... Uh, uh, a credit card company may have really and definitely no FDIC you know so anyway they I sold a film scanner to a guy in Vietnam 
they flagged my account and seized my PayPal account. It was a legitimate deal. So anyway, about $30,000 was in there and it really was screwing me up. I needed to make payments with that. It just Then I did research and found out they had done it to hundreds of people and they keep the money permanently. Um, you know, and they, they ruined some people. So anyway, uh, I did some research and I'm not to be toyed with. Well, I'm stupid enough not to be toyed with. I was willing to put everything on this deal and uh, I was pissed. They were going to keep my money and it was mine. And I, I, they made me send. I mean, it was ridiculous. Be careful with PayPal. I, I, I still avoid them like the plague. Although it's, uh, it may be different now. I haven't researched it. Probably not. Um, but anyway, um, bottom line was there was a guy named Damian Billings, one of the guys who founded YouTube, <laughs> uh, and some other. There were like five of them there, and two of them. Anyway, I remember talking to him about YouTube. I, I, it wasn't totally like a death threat or anything. <laughs> I wasn't going to kill him or anything, you know. But I got so pissed that I, uh, this is a long vlog, that I uh, made a fax of a map with his office on it and made like a, I put a target with a bullseye on it and I put a date on it. And it was like a threatening, <laughs> I didn't threaten to kill him or anything, but it was threatening, you know. It was like skull and crossbones with a cross and date. And I said, I'll, I'm going to meet you there by this date, money. Here's the date. I faxed it to him around the clock and emailed it to him <laughs> for several days. Well, I got the money like the first day, next day after that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying it wasn't really, it wasn't really a death threat. I was just saying, like, damn it, you know, this is uh, toxic and obnoxious what you're doing. Anyway, the same, my luck, the same guys founded YouTube uh, that used to work at PayPal or, or maybe still do. I don't know. Probably not now. But, uh, I remember talking to him about this new compression technology for a video that was just going to be the biggest thing ever, and I knew it was, but I was doing fine without them. So anyway, if they'd give me my 30000 on top of that, I would have been doing better, you know, but uh, it was legitimate. But it was just one of those things that can happen. And that's when I first found out, oh, all of these online companies really aren't quite what they think you think they are. PayPal may still not be a legitimate bank, may still not have to adhere to really any guidelines from anyone, anywhere, anytime. Maybe, I don't know. Back then they didn't. Wasn't a bank, wasn't it? So I'm bitching. Anyway, Damien Billings. <laughs> yeah, that works. I put skull and crossbones in a target on his corner window office with a map and then a full color glossy picture in fact and emailed and faxed it to him 24 hours a day and within a couple of days I got the money you know they released it to my account <laughs> these are the people that started YouTube so take it with a grain of salt anyway vlog out